today on Generator Glimpsings, I'm going to talk about the Mental Projector. So this one's for the Mental Projectors out there. The most important thing for you as a Mental Projector is the G-Center. The ego and the solar plexus can get in the way, sure, but really deeply tuning in to your G-Center, becoming incredibly wise about its inner workings. This is your task. The way I see the G-Center is that it is basically the spirit, and the spirit can be wounded. Uh, for those of you interested in incarnation, um, we have some lives with a defined G center, and we have some incarnations where we come in with an undefined G. And when we have a defined G, it's our responsibility in that life to be human signposts to others, to burn a flame bright for the other, to live as flaming bastions of our cause, our beliefs, our purpose. So, for instance, I have a defined G in this life, and I'm here to basically keep the fire burning, keeping it burning here in Santa Fe, the, the Center for Human Design here and uh, High Desert Human Design Conference, to keep that fire burning for others to come get warm, to be rooted, to maintain my direction. Everyone has a spirit. But the defined G is here to protect and offer direction to the undefined G. To even volunteer to bear the slings and arrows of being a public figure. Undefined Gs are incognito in this life. I suspect many incredibly smart and talented undefined G folks were celebrities or historical figures in a past life, with a cult of personality built around their genius. And they came back in this life with all the same genius, but incognito, undercover. They didn't want all the responsibility of being a public face, of being a poster child in this life. They came back as reflectors, as mental projectors, and others with an undefined G. The mental projector is here to build incredible solutions to the world's problems, to come up with entirely new conceptual frameworks, entirely new and more efficient, more humane structures that are supportive of life in the new era we are entering into. We need our mental projectors for their life force energy, which exists purely between the head, the ajna, and the throat. There is no mental projector with life force that is, with channels, anywhere other than these centers. The centers of solving, knowing, and sharing. So they're here to solve problems, to know and to share what they know. But all mental projectors have undefined G. And so this piece of it has to be understood. This is where you are learning, dear mental projector. People always imagine you go from an incarnation with an undefined center until you learn that center enough, and then you come back with it defined. Well, maybe. But it's just as likely to me that you had many lives with defined G, where you took for granted that you had an automatic, innate, internal compass that would guide you to the right place every time. What I'm saying is, maybe in your last life you had a defined G, and the one before that, and the one before that. And now you're learning how to protect your spirit when you don't have the armor of definition to protect it. When you don't have that compass. We all incarnate with different starting gifts. The defined G has a compass. The undefined G does not. This is a point of interdependence of where we need other people to help us. The undefined G is not here to find the way. They are here to learn discernment about who their teachers should be. The French psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan asked, Can we choose our father? By which he meant, Can we choose our symbolic lineage, who we learn from? Well, the undefined G can. I mean, not really choose, as we know, no choice. 
but can at least be discerning. And through the awareness of discernment, the wrong guides fall away. The undefined G rule. You meet the wrong people in the wrong places. You meet the right people in the right places. There is no other way. So it's either virtuous or vicious, depending on if you're in the right or the wrong place. But you can't get from the wrong to the right place on your own. A defined G can. Seems unfair, doesn't it? The defined G has such an advantage. They just search and they find. But the undefined G is not here to search. The problem of the undefined G is that the grass is always greener, or so it seems. The undefined G has something I would almost call greed. It's greed in the sense that they have a great person guiding them, but they overlook that person. It's not intentional. It's just that the not-self of the undefined G is always searching. And in searching, they overlook who's there. I guarantee someone in your life is a good guide for you, but you may not recognize them as a guide, being so busy looking yourself. Nobody wants to be dependent. We are all interdependent, and yet we all want to be independent. The undefined G has to protect their spirit because it's very vulnerable. If you've had many past lives with defined G, you're probably used to having a fairly indestructible shield around your spirit. But the undefined G does not have this shield. It is vulnerable. It's exposed. And the spirit is wounded most of all by unmet expectations. This is raw. The spirit is scarred by unmet expectations. When life doesn't go the way we expect, well, the Defined G just keeps going. Their spirit is safe. It's protected by their life force energy. But the Undefined G has no such protection. There is really a deep damage that can be done to the spirit for the Undefined G. And all mental projectors are vulnerable to this. And that damage is caused by disillusionment, by having expectations shattered, and then a deep identity crisis and ennui sets in. The solution is to develop the wisdom of the undefined G. All undefined centers are here to develop wisdom. They are all here to learn. And the undefined G starts as a complete fool, the most foolish fool you've ever met when it comes to matters of the spirit. This is what I mean by greed. You have undefined G people who have the best life imaginable, and it's not good enough. They're given everything. Not good enough. Or they have the worst life, the deepest pit of despair, and people try to reach them but cannot, because they are too busy searching for their own solution to accept anyone else's guidance. Or else they accept the wrong person's guidance and put all their eggs in that basket, only to be disillusioned again. The undefined G must become wise about people and place. Learn who your people are. Learn where your power places are. Pare down. Don't go to a restaurant if it isn't one of your favorite restaurants. Don't hang out with people who aren't your favorite people. This is what the undefined G must do. It isn't here to withstand the slings and arrows of life. It's here to learn to really become wise about who has their back and who doesn't, who has good taste and who doesn't, who has good direction and who doesn't, who has sane love and who has insane love, who's reasonable and who isn't. Undefined G people can be so swept up and put all their belief in someone who is utterly undeserving of it, while the deserving ones go neglected. The undefined G starts, as all undefined centers do, as an absolute fool. This is what I mean by greed. It starts greedy for something more, but it doesn't even know when it gets it. The best things get is when you feel lucky. Luck is deeply connected to the spirit. But to really understand luck, you have to understand news. And to understand news, you have to understand relativism. 
See, so many people out there apply relativism in the wrong way. They say everything is just perspective. Everything is just your opinion. And that's not what relativism is meant for. Relativism is meant to be applied to the news. I got a new job. Good news. Well, yes, maybe. Good news, bad news, who knows? That's Ra's favorite joke. He would sometimes imply who knows, meaning his extra personality crystal, the who. And, you know, that maybe that actually had some sense of this, but that he himself didn't really know. But nevertheless, who knows, really? It seems like good news, it turns out to be bad news. It seems to be bad, it turns out good. The great Polish playwright Stanislaw Witkiewicz said, There is nothing good which could not be better, and there is nothing bad which could not be worse. And I would add to this that better is the enemy of best. Voltaire said it first, Perfect is the enemy of good. What that means is that when you have the best possible life, you still have the illusion that it could be better. That illusion never goes away. This is what I mean by greed. When things are the best possible, the best of all possible worlds, there will still be a fantasy that there could be a better life. Which, if you got it, would not be better. But it seems that way. And this is what the undefined G is here to learn. And this is the true meaning of luck. Now, I'm not saying have a positive mental attitude and that your mindset will change your reality. Not at all. You can't fake feeling lucky, or at least you shouldn't. But you can decondition from always searching, always looking for direction, looking for love, looking for identity. Who am I really? All these questions that are the wrong questions to ask. What am I here to do? Am I really meant for this? And so on. When these questions go away, what remains is the news. You get news and it seems good, but it could be bad. Or it seems bad, but it could be good. So you can't trust the news. All you begin to be able to trust is your sense of feeling lucky. When you really feel lucky. Truly lucky. And that's in the spirit. It's the spirit that feels lucky. It's the G-center you begin to become sensitive to the quiet feeling in your chest that is behind the affronted, hurt feelings of the amplified, undefined ego, or the intensity and excitement or boredom of the amplified, undefined solar plexus, or the attachment and fear of the undefined spleen. Those undefined centers, through their deconditioning, get quieter. And in getting quieter, you begin to hear the G-Center more loudly. And what it says is that it feels lucky to know someone, the person that can bring it to the places it likes, the person it likes, the person who's one of your favorite people. And when you hang out with your favorite people and they bring you to your favorite places, you truly feel lucky. Alokanand Diaz, himself with Undefined G., told me the greatest secret to the undefined G. He said, If you wake up in the morning and you feel lucky to be where you are, life doesn't get better than that. If you look around and go, Wow, I'm lucky to be here. Stop looking. Because you found it. You're there. If you don't feel lucky to be there, no amount of pretending can make you feel lucky. But instead of looking for where you're meant to be, look for who you actually like, who you actually enjoy. Who's your favorite person? Who's your second favorite? Who's your third favorite? And these favorite people of yours, are they worthy of being your favorite? Do they live up to it? Do they take you to places where you truly feel comfortable? See, in some ways, you have the easiest yardstick of all, even easier than sacral response. The one thing you can always trust every single time is whether or not you feel comfortable somewhere. You can't fake feeling comfortable. 
The not-self won't trick you into feeling comfortable in a place where you feel uncomfortable. You'll feel comfortable or you won't. And if you do, it's the right place. And if you don't, it's the wrong place. Simples, as they say in Scotland. And if you feel comfortable with someone, that person has more to give you. And if you don't feel comfortable anymore, or maybe you never did in the first place, that person has nothing more to give you. No problem. Next. You're here to be endlessly courted, to be given opportunities for love, opportunities for direction, opportunities for identity, to be presented who you could be, what kind of life you could have. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to go looking for it. You're here to be offered it. You just need to be discerning, and you can only be discerning through patience, through living your design. Everything you're here to give the world is in your outer authority. It's in your solving, your knowing, your sharing. It's in your creation of new mental systems that are more efficient, more humane. But that can't guide your decision-making. It's for the other. It's not for you. What's truly for you in this life is your favorite people, your favorite places, your favorite music, your favorite movies, your favorite plants, your favorite parks, you name it. The name of the game is favorite, where you are comfortable, where the people who make you comfortable, the places that make you comfortable, the things that make you comfortable, your favorite food. This is what you get to learn, and you get to discover new favorites without ever having to go out there and find them. You just become discerning about who you're trusting. Love is instantaneous. Trust takes time. So take time. Be patient. Learn with that undefined G not to immediately trust, because then you'll be disappointed later, and that disappointment of unmet expectations will scar your spirit. Those scars are permanent. All you can do is avoid getting them in the first place. At the same time, some undefined Gs shut down and never trust. They overcompensate. They feign independence. They've been hurt so badly they never trust again. Open yourself up to the right people. Above all, be discerning. That's what you're here to learn with your undefined G. Discernment. Discernment.